of a dose effect curve where we uh, treat, for example, some cells with a drug at various concentrations and then we measure some activity, maybe biomarker concentration or whatever we want to measure. Um, so I kept it uh, very uh, generalized, uh, just saying some activity. And what we want to find out is really at which drug concentration do we find half of the activity uh, being generated in the cell. And uh, we see that the maximum activity that we get is around a thousand units. Minimum is pretty close to zero. So what we are looking at is at which drug concentration do we see half of the activity. So that would be uh, basically the difference between thousand and one. Uh, and divided by two, so that would be roughly 500. And we see that this would be a drug concentration between 0 0.000001 and 0 0.000003. And, but uh, the question is, can we do a little bit uh, better with that? So let's have a look at what the data just simply look like. So I've highlighted the cells and Let's do uh, just a simple scatter plot of the data and I use that with a line in it so that hopefully we can see something uh, what's going on and we get a scatter plot. So here on the x axis we've got our drug concentrations and on the y axis we've got the activity and what we see is a sort of uh, not a very revealing uh, graph because uh, what we see is this sort of a very hyperbolic, almost uh, rectangular shape of the graph. And uh, what we are interested in is the concentration that gives us half of the uh, activity so that would be at around 500 but we can't read it from the from the plot now of course in excel you could make this line here this axis logarithmic so i've highlighted the the axis and i double click it and it comes up with another window over there where it says uh, can we do logarithmic scale and what we see now is a typical dose effect for curve where we have a logarithmic scale here on the uh, on the x-axis so that's this very familiar logarithmic scale and we now can do a much better job if we can so we get about 500 so we see something it's it's again it's in between the 0 0.00001 and 0 0.001 but it doesn't really give us a lot more information because we can't really change the tick marks here so what can we do instead let's get rid of that so instead what we can do is we can calculate the logarithm of these and then plot it uh, sort of by hand. So in order to do that, we insert a new column and we call this the log to the base of 10 of the drug. And that's uh, pretty straightforward. So equals log 10. And all we need to do is just want this uh, field here, close the bracket. Uh, so minus 8, so that was 10 to the minus 8. And now we just simply drag it and let Excel fill in the data. So here we've got our log 10 drug. And now let's plot this log 10 drug versus the activity. And we should get a very similar plot that we just seen, a dose effect curve uh, with this typical sigmoidal shape. But this time we can manipulate the, um, the tick marks. So let's see. Yes, we got that. So here we've got the log 10 of the drug concentration and here we've got our activity. And what we can do is we can insert here some of the tick marks so that we can actually do a, a reading of it. So uh, what we would do is we would say we want minor type tick marks 
and we would like to say we cross outside and we want them as 0 0.2. So every 0 0.2 do we want a tick mark and that looks pretty good. So let's make this a little bit larger that we can read of it. Okay, so here we've got our line of our dose effect curve with a nice logarithmic uh, x-axis, log 10 x-axis. And now at 500 here, uh, we that's roughly 500 we would read a value of approximately negative 5.8. So our corresponding x value is negative 5.8 roughly. And of course we could do some error calculations and we could linearize that, but for the purpose of this uh, tutorial we just simply say it's 5.8. Now, what does that tell us? This 5.8 that we have here is actually the log 10 of the drug. So if we want to convert that now, what we need to do is in order to convert that back into a drug concentration, we need to say the drug concentration that gave us this value uh, equals 10 to the power 10 to the power of this value that we just read of our graph and uh, let's do that again equals 10 to the power of negative 5.8 and we got a drug concentration of 1.58. Well, in this case, I would say probably uh, 1.6. Let's round this. So this would be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 6 to the minus 6. So 1.6 micromolar of the drug gives us an EC50. That is the EC50, the effective concentration that gives us half of the activity. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.